Hello and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at how to build AI applications using the Writer AI framework. Now, the Writer AI framework is an open source, low code tool that was developed by Writer that allows you to build these applications pretty quickly. Now, I'm going to show you a quick example of an application I already built using this particular framework, and I'm going to show you exactly how you can build it yourself as well. Now, what I have here is a stock analysis application where I provide a simple stock ticker. In this case, I'm going to provide the Salesforce stock ticker, which is CRM and a time frame in this case the past six months and when I do a get analysis as you can see here provides me with a frame of the stock prices as well as um, an LLM generated analysis of uh, this particular stock including some kind of recommendation about what I can do with the stock so you can use this application to build different types of things I just wanted to show you a very very quick example of how it works now to get started you should go and sign up for Writer AI Studio I'll drop the link in the description um, and once you sign up you can you have access to the AI studio. They offer you some really, really generous credits. So now let's go ahead and see how you can build an application. Now to build an application, all you need to do is to go to build an app and you need to go to framework. Now framework will give you the steps that you need to follow when you're building an application. So first and foremost, you want to start by installing Writer. You want to grab your API key and export it as an environment variable inside your application. And using the CLI Writer create and the app name you want, you can create an app of your own. Now I've gone ahead and created my own application in here and I want to show you just a few things about each app. So I created an app called Fin App. Uh, once you create an app using the CLI, it's going to generate a folder which includes these files. Now the flat files include a static folder where you can drop things like images and things of that nature. You have your main.py. This is where your functions are going to live and we're going to walk through the uh, implementation of the application that I just showed you. We also have like poetry log because they use poetry for dependency management, especially when you're packaging up the application for deployment. And there is a UI.json, which is a UI definition um, of uh, which uh, lives inside um, a JSON file. So this is basically all the components of the application that I just showed you. Uh, living in this particular UI framework. Now, if you want to learn more about how to build really, really complex app, all the components and stuff like that, I'm going to put the links uh, to the documentation in the description as well so you can see how, how it works. I'm going to make other videos as well showing you other things that you can do using this Writer AI framework. All right, so now let's dig in. Now, once you set up your application, it is typically going to be hosted uh, when you start running the application. So actually, let's just walk through this very, very quickly. So to create an application, you do Writer Create your app name. Now to run, to, to edit your application, you can also do writer edit and we do fin app in my case here. And this would open up your application. Like I said, it's hosted on uh, pot 3006. So if you go there, you can get access to your application and you can see like sort of drag and drop interface. So very, very similar to most sort of no code tools that you would be using, um, you know, in, in, you know, all you're familiar with already. All right, so now I'll just walk you through the, the, the no code side, the drag and drop, the UI side first, and then we're gonna go into the code to see exactly what's going on right there as well. All right, so here we have three modes that you can operate in. You can operate with the user interface mode. So this mode really gives you access to all these different components. So uh, as an example, uh, you have layout, you have a sidebar section header, typical components for any UI building application that you can expect. You have content, so text, heading. One of the things I really like about it also is that they have these things like data frame. And so taking a pandas data frame and just rendering it right on the application. Uh, you can render images, icons, um, plot graphs as well, show metrics, show tags, avatars. So all of 
various things that you want to show you can basically use these different types of components for creating forms as an example there's a text input component um, and you have all these other elements as well so i think nothing too crazy very very similar to stuff that you would have been very familiar with they also provide you with the ability to drop in iframes so you can bring iframes of other applications into your application google map map box um, html elements if you're trying to do something really fancy uh you know pagination and all of that now underneath here we have a component tree which kind of shows you sort of the hierarchy of what's going on in your page starting with the root element which is sort of the primary element on the page and then you have a page element where you can now put in your different components so all, as you can see we have all these different components um so that's just sort of the user interface mode now the next mode is the code mode which basically gives us access to our main.py file so let's take a look at exactly how i have gone ahead to build this particular application so just to give you a sense of what's going on so here we have a root page to add a component you can either drag and drop the component if you want or you can just simply use um, this to add different elements into your application so here i have my input text or actually i do have uh, first and foremost i have a column container which contains uh which kind of basically has like different columns in it and one of the columns in it is uh, this column which includes a message the message component allows you to sort of use that for success message warning error messages things of that nature um, the text input allows you to kind of capture text as the name implies. If you kind of look at each component though, you will notice that you have the properties on the side right here as well. So on the properties, you would see like what the label is. In my case, is a stock ticker as the name implies. You have a placeholder text where you can just sort of give people a hint. And if it's a password, you can set this to yes, so that whenever someone is typing anything in there, it's going to be captured as a password. Now, I'm going to talk about binding information and state management because that's really the meat of this. The functionality comes from binding. But for a second, I just want to show you all these different components as well. We also have this drop down component as an example. Here we have drop down, and you can populate your drop down either directly using JSON or using a static list. Um, I'm using JSON and doing it dynamically from my back end. So that's how it's working right here. Now, each uh, application that you select will also have like an event handler. So for instance, with our button here, our button has a name and things of that nature, but it also has like an event handler. So you can basically use a function to handle that event. So that's how the framework works you bind your UI components to the back end using these event handlers. So I'm going to show you the events that is powering this and show you exactly what it looks like. Over here on the output section, um, I have my output column and I have a section in there. I have a message once again to show, um, you know, success and things of that nature. I have a heading. I have the actual text, which is hidden. Uh, so that's one more cool thing that you have here. You have the ability to define whether a component is hidden or is displayed. So I'm using this stock summary visible as a way to either display or hide these different components. We have a separate and then we have a data frame which contains the information that is coming back from my stock prices and that's really all there is to it in terms of the UI itself now let's go ahead and take a look at the uh, back end to see exactly what's going on I'm just going to go go into the code um, area and just show you what I have done here now I've installed pandas and Y finance Y finance is basically um, version of Yahoo Finance that just pulls information from Yahoo Finance is an unofficial sort of library. If you're working with Yahoo Finance, you want to pull information from uh, stocks or about companies and things like that. So I'm using that to just pull that information in uh, just as an example, but I'm now passing that information to an LLM for the summary that you saw earlier on and also displaying some of the information that's coming back inside our data frame. So let's take a look at what's going on here. Now to use the writer, uh, framework you need to import writer and we're importing writer as wf 
WF, meaning like writer framework. And we have the writer.ai. Basically, this allows us to use the writer model. What's really cool about writer is that they come with these models that are very, very domain specific. So there's a writer LLM for finance. There's a writer LLM for, for medical or health use called, I think it's Primera Med or Primera and Primera Fin, respectively. Now, I'm going to drop links in the description for, uh, for you. There are also open source models which you can access via Hugging Face as well, which is pretty cool. But they are really tailored towards getting high performance in these domain areas. So when you're thinking about building a finance related app or a healthcare application, these would be the kind of models that you want to use in terms of, in terms of benchmarks and things like that. They really, really rate uh, very, very high compared to more generic or general use type um, models as well. Now, the way uh, the writer framework works from a data perspective is that it uses states. Now to initialize a state, we use the dot in its state method. Now this basically initializes your state. What is your state? All the information about your application. So as an example, if we were to just make a change to this stack stock analysis application right here. So if I just change this and I saved and run this, that would change my uh, stock analysis application. Now, how am I binding these two together? So if you look at the stock analysis application, we have app underscore title. So that is where that is the name of the state for this particular app name. So once you define the state, it's bound to the UI element. Now to define this, you always have to put it an at um, curly braces and then the name of the state. So if we go back to our code, we can see our state right here, stock analysis app. Now we have other state that we define. So I think one of the things about building these um, framework applications is kind of understanding the state management. So you have to define all the different things that are going to be part of your state. So let's take a look at a few other things. So selected stock would be whatever I put in here. So if we go back and look at the state handling this, so that is right here, ticker. So that is my, my state. Uh, for this, so it's the ticker is the state element that I'm using here. For my time frame is time underscore frame. For my time frame options, the JSON that I am referencing is time frame underscore options, and that is the states that I'm using to pull that information as my drop down. Now, if we kind of continue to go along that. Um, we have all these different things. We also have all the information that we want to store. So a few other things that are important, things like visibility. So you can use states to also manage like your visibility. So I have this stock summary visible, which is set to false by default. But whenever I, I kind of populate this stock uh, summary, I can set it to true, which is why like when you go look at this, it's actually currently um, set to hidden. Uh, so that's where my summary exists. So, so you can play around with sort of visibility, how you want it to display and things of that nature. All right, so we have our initialization done. So now that we're done with initialization, uh, we have our update message uh, function. So this just simply updates our different messages. So error messaging, success messaging, warnings, and things like that. So this function does, does that. So as we sort of go through our operations, we can update those messages as we go along the way. Now, this is the main um, event handler uh, for our get analysis button. So here what we're doing first and foremost is to extract the state from our input fields. So we have two input fields, the stock ticker and the time frame. We extract these um, values from there. And once we extract the values, the very first thing we're doing is that we're calling a Y finance function to just pull that information in. So stock info, stock history, we want to pull all that information in. Once that information is pulled in, we want to store them in state, right? So we have all those states that we had initialized earlier on. We want to store all of this information in that state, um, including a data frame as well. So we're taking the stock history that is coming in, it typically comes in as a table, and we're passing it into a data frame to store it in a data frame and store 
it in state. Now, keep in mind that you have a data frame component, which you can just simply pass any data frame uh, and it will just sort of take that information in. So that's what we're doing in that uh, case. Now, the other thing that is very, very important here is that we're not just doing uh, a call and displaying the information. We're taking that information and we're passing it to an LLM to do some kind of analysis and provide some information back. So to make that happen, we're just passing the stock summary, so all the information we've gotten from the stock summary, we're passing it to our generate summary function. All right, so basically in terms of generating the summary, we're using this function that is called a generate summary, where we're passing all the information that's coming back from our Yahoo Finance information. We're passing it to this model. Now this model is Primera Fin-32K. Uh, this is a financial services specific model. So the domain has been trained on and it really ranks really high in terms of solving those uh, financial services type questions or queries, understanding context around these financial services. So when you're doing stock analysis or you're doing these types of things, this might be a better model to use than a more generalized model. So that's sort of what they're doing here. Now, the writer provides like a conversation class, which gives you access to the model to play with, uh, basically takes in first and foremost, a system prompt, as you can see here a system prompt which basically is, is quite basic here but you can make it more sophisticated and we have a config uh, which is where we are passing in the model you can also pass things like temperature and all of these other types of configurations and things like that and once you're done basically we just want to uh, you know get a response so conversation.complete this is how we get the response from the LLM and we pass that response back and display it on our page I'm gonna drop the code in a github repository and put the link in the the description so you can see exactly how you can build these apps up. There's so many different possibilities and I'll encourage you to go to their uh, documentation page where they have added quite a ton of different examples of applications that you can use. And finally, once you're done building out these applications, you can very, very easily uh, deploy them to production. All right, so once your application is deployed, you can find it within this particular area. You see sort of your framework application. You see, you know, everything about your application as well as, as, well as the URL if you want to, um, you know, play around with it. Now, I'll encourage you to go in, dig into the Rider AI framework and check it out, see all the possibilities. There's so many, many, many things you can build with it. In the next video, I'm going to be talking a little bit about their knowledge graph and using their API models um, so that you can get a sense of what that looks like. Uh, until next time, do have a great one. Bye.